Hello everyone, I'm Catherine and welcome to our Bible teaching time for families with under 11s. Now over the last few weeks we've been looking at the book of Acts in the Bible and uh, so for today's session uh, in order to follow along you'll need to find Acts chapter 2 in your Bibles and we'll be looking at the very end of that chapter from verse 43. Now I wonder if you can remember our memory verse from a couple of weeks ago. It is, but the Holy Spirit will come to you. Then you will receive power. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria and in every part of the world. Did you remember it? Buzz Lightyear here has been reminding us that the story of Jesus went to Jerusalem and beyond. We've been hearing about how Jesus' followers waited in Jerusalem for Jesus to send them something that would help them share the good news. And last time we heard how he sent his Holy Spirit with loud sounds and fire and different languages. And then he helped Peter to be brave and tell a huge crowd all about Jesus and to show them that they needed to repent. Do you remember that? Repent, turn their lives around and trust in Jesus. Today we'll find what happened next. What did all those new Christians do now that there were so many of them? Well, for this next bit of the story, we're going to hear some news from a rather strange journalist who's there on the scene. And so through a mix of time travel and technology, we're going to go to our special reporter, Evan Jellicle, in first century Jerusalem. So Evan, tell us what's been happening there. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, we've seen some very dramatic events over here in the last few days and weeks. You'll remember the reports of strange goings on with the followers of a new sect called The Way. It has emerged that they are followers of Jesus of Nazareth, the religious teacher who was executed last month. One of their leaders, named Peter, said in a speech recently that Jesus rose from the dead and is still at work, helping his followers. The strange thing was that when Peter said this, people of all different languages understood him. Well, that's amazing, Evan. Has anything changed since the day when Peter made his speech? Well, there are a lot more people involved now. That first day, over 3,000 people joined the movement by following Peter's instruction to repent and believe in Jesus. Since then, even more people have joined and they say that Peter and the other leaders have been doing miracles and telling people about Jesus every day in the temple. As a reporter, I can definitely say it's a scandal and definitely bad news for someone. Really? That sounds like rather good news to me. What are all the new followers doing now? Oh, I'm sure it's really bad stuff. Uh, hang on, let, let me check my notes. Ah, uh, yes, yes. It says here they are spending lots of time together, being kind to one another and sharing their stuff so that nobody is indeed. Wait, that, that just sounds nice. Oh, what, what else? Uh, they share meals together where they think about Jesus. They are really happy when they get together and everyone likes them. That doesn't sound like a very good news story, does it? I was hoping for a scandal or something. Don't worry, I'm sure I will make up, I mean, find out some more soon. For now, I'll sign off. This is Evangelical Live from Jerusalem, where Jesus' followers are being scandalously kind to one another. Back to you, Catherine. Thanks, Evan. It sounded like Evan was finding it very difficult to say bad things about Jesus' followers, didn't it? That's because they were doing so many good things. This was before anyone had invented the word Christian and before anyone had built a building called church. Jesus' followers were the church. In fact, Jesus' followers still are the church. Our buildings are just buildings, nice and useful though they are. We 
are the church. In the weeks after the Holy Spirit came, Jesus' followers were working out just what it meant to be the church. And they were learning how Christians should act with each other and how they should act with other people. Did you hear some of the things that they did? I wonder if you can remember them. Pause the video now and see if you can tell the other people in your family some of the things that Jesus' followers did. I wonder how many you came up with. Well, Jesus' 12 special friends, they were doing miracles and signs that helped people understand about Jesus. Uh, the other followers, they, they had meals together, they shared their things, they met in the temple every day, they met up and remembered Jesus, they praised God, lots of things. More and more people joined them each day and the church grew and grew. It must have been a very exciting time, mustn't it? But you know, actually, we are part of that story too. You are the church if you've repented, as Rich explained to us. We are the church. There's actually a really good song called We Are The Church and I recommend that you listen to it in a few minutes time. It's by Awesome Cutlery and I'll put the link in the description on YouTube so that you can click on that and listen along to it. Being the church means that we too should be doing the kinds of things that those first Christians did. We should be praising God and meeting together, even if you have to do that over the internet. We should be caring for one another and being kind to one another. We should be sharing our things. We should be being glad that Jesus is our saviour and our friend and we should be wanting to tell other people about him too. Here's a couple of ideas of activities that you could do to help you think about what it means to be the church. First of all, draw a picture of the church with your family. Now don't do one each, just do one big one and you'll have to share pens and maybe take turns using materials. You can draw it using any, whatever you like. Draw an outline of a church building, but then draw all the people that actually make up the church. You could even see if you can remember the names of some of the people you know from church or, or draw pictures that look like them. When you've finished your picture, then I want you to think of somebody from church who might like to have it. It could be somebody older or younger or the same age as you, but it can't be anyone who lives in your house. The next time you're out and about, drop it through their door or leave it where they'll find it. You could write them a note too to say how much you miss seeing them in church. The other activity involves talking rather than writing or drawing. With your family, try making up a story by saying one word each. So once upon a sausage. Do you see, you don't know what's coming next, so your stories are likely to be a bit silly and quite fun. So see how you get on working together to try and tell a story. Well, before we finish and it's time to hand over to you at home, I'm going to say a prayer. Do join in with me by uh, closing your eyes, putting your hands together, and then you can say Amen at the end as well. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the church. Thank you for followers of Jesus all over the world. Thank you for making us into a big family who care for each other. We're sorry for the times when we haven't done that very well. Help us to remember, to love, and to care for other people in our church family. Amen. It's good to know that God helps us with things like caring for other people. His Holy Spirit will help us with things like kindness and bravery if we ask him to. Now, it's time to look at the story in Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 43. Do that with your family. You can use the questions that will be on the screen. And don't forget to check out that awesome cutlery song as well. I'll say goodbye for now and God bless you.